If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you gonna scare them off to? Hell number two? Or are you just gonna sit there and let them burn? Hi Chris, thanks for letting me come on Don't Let Them Burn. Uh, we're gonna to talk today about uh, two books. The newest book uh, out is Be Not Deceived. That's the newest book in the Better Bible Study Method book series. Um, what this book is gonna do is it's gonna present a series of case studies, lab exercises, if you will, where it challenges the reader to consider a particular question or issue and then to put down their book, put down the book, go pick up their Bible, read it through, write down what they think is going on or what they think is the answer to the question, and then come back and compare their notes to just the scripture that's gonna be presented and see if they've left truth on the table. My argument is results speak for themselves. And if in fact the Bible proves to the reader's satisfaction they have left truth on the table, then they need to realize it's not a problem with this or that issue. There's something across the board that's causing us to leave truth on the table on all these issues. And my argument is gonna be that God's word has counsel in it on how we should be studying God's word and we're not following that advice. If we do follow that advice and apply it consistently and with integrity, we'll get better results in our Bible study. So um, that's the second book called Be Not to See. The first book in the series is actually called The Disciple Whom Jesus Loved. That takes actually a courtroom evidence scenario. It's as act as if you've been summoned for jury duty, but the only evidence allowed in the court in this case is the testimony of God's inspired witnesses. Uh, you can't quote your favorite TV guy or your favorite commentary because they can be wrong, but the Bible can't be wrong. That's the premise. We're going to put the traditions of men on trial and see if it stands the test of Scripture, as Scripture encouraged us to do with passages like prove all things and hold fast that which is good. It does not say prove some things and take the teacher's word for the rest. So if we're going to be consistent in applying a biblical test to ideas that we believe or we are taught, um, that's a way to, to know if something meets the standard of God's Word. And the book is free online. People can download it, print it off. Uh, the ebooks are all there. If they uh, want a print copy, there's no charge. They can send us an address. We'll send it to them. Or they can get it on Amazon and or eBay, but those sites won't let us give it away for free. So we put the lowest price on it. They'll, they'll let us put it at, on those sites. And um, basically the, post, the person ends up paying the postage and a little bit more. But... Um, uh, we're not profiting from it after they're cut because uh, we've stolen all of our original material from God's Word. So our goal is not to profit from it, but merely to uh, share back with people the truth we've learned from Scripture. And uh, for example, uh, one of the case studies in the new book is um, called The Case of the Eleven. Uh, I pose this following question to readers. On the night that Jesus... Uh, appears on the resurrection it says he appeared to the eleven and rebuked them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart because they believed not the reports of those that had seen him by that point in the day and Luke confirms it it says the two on the road of Emmaus after that Jesus left they immediately returned to Jerusalem and met with the eleven and they didn't believe Jesus uh, uh, they didn't believe the eleven until uh, the eleven did not believe their report until Jesus showed up so I asked people the eleven it's the night of the resurrection who's missing and everybody of course says Judas of course, Judas is dead. He was long since gone. But the fourth gospel tells us that Thomas was not there that night. He didn't see Jesus till eight days later. So how do you get the 11 if both Thomas and Judas are not there? Mm. That's a question that haunted me for years. Um, sometimes we have to wait on the Lord. And in this case, I had to. But now I can share the, the question publicly because I, uh, the Lord's actually provided me the biblical evidence to answer the question. But during those first four years, I actually shared that question with almost nobody because it could look like a contradiction in Scripture, but God's Word is true, so it can't contradict itself. And so, though it like it might appear to somebody at some point that there's an insurmountable problem, just because it doesn't look like there isn't an answer or a solution doesn't mean there isn't one. It just means we can't see it at that moment, and God can open our eyes. So that's what we're looking to do in the book series. None of the books I write will ever quote anything but the Scripture. Uh, that doesn't make them right, but it does keep the ground of discussion on what God's Word actually says rather than what other people say it says. Um, Paul at one point talks about those who comparing themselves among themselves and measuring themselves by themselves are not wise. He just told you that's not a wise thing to do. Yet what do people repeatedly do? They say, well, the consensus is this, or they said that, and they're measuring 
what might be true by what this or that person or group says. But that's not a biblical method. Paul just told you that wasn't wise. We should, in fact, employ the counsel that's in God's word, such as trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Now think about this. If you're not even supposed to lean on your own understanding, why would you think you should lean on some other man's understanding? He's not even supposed to lean on his own understanding. That doesn't make any sense. What we need to lean on is the inspired word of God. All of it, every bit of it, and not play the pick and choose game. We can't say, oh, well, take this over here and leave that over there, because it's all inspired by God. James makes that clear when he says, if you've offended in one point, you're guilty of all. Look, that's not saying that stealing penny candy is the same as mass murder. That's not his point. His point is, it's like if you had a piece of plate glass window and a, a rock was thrown in and had a, it created a small crack in one corner. It's no longer a hole. But if you smash it into a thousand pieces, it's still no longer a hole. Both of them, smashing a million pieces or a small crack, affect the fact of the hole. And what he's telling us is, he who said, don't steal also said don't commit adultery and if you don't steal or don't murder and you don't commit it and you do commit adultery you're offending the author of all of it God's authority stands behind all of God's Word that's why we need to submit our beliefs and the things we're taught to God's Word last point Jesus told his disciples at one point he said take heed what you hear for with the measure you meet it will be measured unto you if we don't take heed to what we hear and we hear something and we assume it's true because some teacher we respect said it from that point on that could prejudice our view of scripture because we'll assume it's true so that's the way we'll look at scripture rather than saying is that true and putting it to the test of scripture this the first book the disciple and jesus love they'll help wake people up to that and uh, the second book be not deceived will also do that trying to get people to employ an evidence-based bible study method the evidence being the facts that are preserved for us in the biblical record. So again, uh, the website, the disciple whom Jesus loved.com on the first book or a better, a better Bible study method.com on the second book. And um, people are welcomed and invited to send me their feedback, their comments, their critique on the book. If they thought that I said something that wasn't justified by the biblical evidence or I misconstrued a verse, or if I failed to include a piece of biblical evidence that was material to the case, I welcome that correction. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.